Do you get angry so easily that people have suggested anger management counseling? Or maybe it's not that extreme and you just can't resist arguing with every take you see on Twitter. Or maybe you get anxious to the point of being completely ineffective and you've got a list of irrational fears that have ruined any hope you had at a social life. Well, that you would have if you weren't too busy arguing on Twitter. This video will teach you what Musashi's Dokoro, the little brother of the more famous Book of Five Rings, taught me about conquering my fears and controlling my emotions. These techniques help me in everything from growing up in the violent public housing projects of Pittsburgh, PA, to facing off against trained savages in the boxing ring. But first, I want you to imagine something. Imagine being so calm and collected that nothing could shake you. Not your boss, not your relationships, not even your worst fears. Well, stop whatever you're doing because I'm about to teach you something that will forever transform how you handle stress and emotional turmoil. And it's not from a therapist. It's not meditation. And it won't force you to be uncomfortable. Well, not too uncomfortable. And only mentally and only for a little bit but then you'll be much stronger and more resilient than you ever thought possible. All it will require is that you see the world from a new, liberating perspective, despite that perspective coming from a source so old that most people don't even know it exists. And the last part, you won't even believe it. The Dokodo is so short that it barely fills up one page. Now I wanna remind you, I've been using these techniques and perspectives my entire life to survive everything from roaming bands of crack addicts to professional fighters, and even handling the stress of working on my physics degree. If I can keep calm in the wild landscape of the ghetto, filled with drive-by shootings and unpredictable violence, or in the middle of a heavyweight fight, or dealing with the stress of the military, fighting professionally, and solving electricity and magnetism problems all in the same week, I know that you can apply these same principles to stop letting your surroundings hijack your emotions. Whether chopping your opponents down in sword fights or practicing calligraphy in the mountains, Musashi knew how to control his emotions. That emotional control is one of the reasons why he won over 60 sword duels to the death. Now, most people have at least heard of Musashi's more famous book, The Book of Five Rings, but his lesser known work, The Dokodo, is more impactful and much shorter. It's so short that it's not even a book. It's just 21 sentences Musashi jotted down the week before his death on how to stay cool, calm and collected and how to live the life of a lone warrior. In this video, I'm not covering all 21 principles. Instead, we're going to just focus on one big idea, how to quell anxiety, conquer your fears and control your emotions. These are qualities that are as vital today as they were in 17th century Japan. When I was reading the principles, I thought of how similar the ideas were to the Stoic philosophy outlined in Marcus Aurelius's Stoic classic Meditations. And this makes sense as both Musashi and Marcus were warriors and as such, emotional control was a non-negotiable trait. By the end of this video, you'll be armed with four tips from Miyamoto Musashi's Dokoro that will make sure you never lose your head, literally or figuratively. But before I get to that, I have to tell you that everything you think you know about being angry is wrong. Why? Everyone has been angry at something or someone before, but have you ever stopped to ask yourself exactly why you experience anger or any other negative emotion in the first place? My theory is completely unscientific, but I believe that every negative emotion stems from two underlying illusions. The first illusion is the belief that people can change the past. People waste emotional energy wishing they could change things that have already happened, an impossible task that only creates suffering. You can't unhear an insult any more than the person can unsay it. Now, this is what apologies attempt to accomplish, but depending on the severity of the transgression, they have varying levels of effectiveness. The second illusion is the mistaken perspective that the world cares about you. People take things personally and believe their struggles have special meaning, when in reality, the universe is indifferent to your individual troubles. Sure, some people close to you may care about your problems or others might have it out specifically for you, but most of the time, most people don't even know you exist, let alone care about what you're dealing with. We've all got our own problems to deal with, and if dealing with those problems happens to cause you a problem, it's rarely personal. You're just collateral damage. In the comments below, I want you to tell me about a time that you took something personal that probably wasn't personal and you learned the hard way, can't fix everything with an apology. Now, Musashi understood that there's nothing he could do about the world, the events in it, and the people controlling those events. There's a great scene in the great crime drama and one of my favorite shows, The Wire, where drug kingpin Marlo Stanfield is confronted by a rent-a-cop security guard as he walks out the store with candy he obviously didn't pay for. You wanted to be one way. What? 
You want it to be one way. Man, I don't you want it to you. be one Man, way. Man, stop. Stop saying that. Notice how flustered the security guard is compared to Marlo. This one scene beautifully demonstrates the difference between people who accept the impersonal brutality of life. Spoiler alert, Marlo orders a hit on the security guard for having the balls to interrupt his shoplifting and someone who wants to exert his own opinions and order on the world. In that one line, Marlo sums up a perspective on life perfectly. You want it to be one way, but it's the other way. Musashi's first principle in the Dokoro is to accept everything just the way it is. People push back against this principle because one reasonable interpretation is that you should not bother to change things. Now that's a reasonable response, but it's simplistic to the point of inaccuracy, grossly imprecise, and in some instances will cost you your life. Accepting things as they are means you don't wish for them to be anything other than what they are. Look. If I live in a rough gang controlled area and I ignore this principle, then I might decide I'm going to be righteous and start calling the police and yelling at drug dealers for staying up late and keeping me and my baby up all night when I've got work in the morning. You can guess how that will probably turn out, but if you can't, let's just say that street justice only applies if you break the rules of the street. And two of those rules are don't talk to the police and mind your business. It's much better for me to do what I can to move out of my area. The situation in your life that's pissing you off probably doesn't have such dire consequences if you don't fix it, but the principle still applies. Realize that your anger isn't going to change your environment or the people in it. Accept the situation as is and do what you can to put yourself into a place where accepting things as they are works to your benefit. But you're probably saying to yourself that this is way easier said than done and you want a practical method for doing this. And in the most unexpected way possible, Musashi tells us exactly how in another Dokodo principle. Let me tell you about something I learned while training for fights that perfectly demonstrates another one of Musashi's principles in the accent. A little known fact about me is that I actually had two cage fights before I went full time into boxing. Now, I competed in heavyweight boxing, where the weight minimum is 201 pounds because I was around 230 at that time. But I decided to compete as a light heavyweight in MMA, where the maximum for that weight class is 205. So I had to cut weight and it was a miserable experience, especially in the final 24 hours where I'm not drinking water. Anyone who's ever done a weight cut knows it's pure misery. No water, no food, sitting in saunas until you're dizzy, the whole nine. Your body starts to scream at you to drink something, anything. But here's what's interesting. The physical discomfort wasn't what broke me. It was the mental anguish of wanting the suffering to end. See, Musashi has this principle in the Dokoro that seems strange at first. Do not pursue the taste of good food. Now, most people think this is about not being a glutton, but there is deeper wisdom here. It's about not letting your desires control you. When I was cutting weight, I realized something profound. The physical sensation of thirst was actually manageable. What made it unbearable was my mind constantly thinking about a good sip of water. The more I focused on wanting the discomfort to end, the worse it became. This is exactly how negative emotions work. The actual feeling of anger, fear, or anxiety isn't what destroys us. It's our desperate desire to want these feelings to stop. The more you fight against the negative emotion, the stronger it gets. Just like how the more I thought about water to my weight cut, the thirstier I felt. Instead of fighting these feelings, I learned to just observe them, to feel the physical sensation without letting my mind spiral into wanting it to end. Whether it's dehydration in a training camp or anxiety before a fight, the principle is still the same. Don't pursue comfort. Don't run from discomfort. Just let it be. I chose the discomfort of boxing, and although things went well most of the time, there is one instance where my emotional control was put to the test yet again. When I suffered my first professional loss, I was embarrassed to the point where I didn't check social media for days. The reality is that most people didn't even know I was fighting, even though I blasted everyone about it via text and social media. What I came to realize can be summed up beautifully in a tweet I posted a few years after that incident. The thing that most embarrasses you, others give not a single thought to. False is the shame that's all in your head, it fools you into thinking you're dead. So many people fear death, but death is coming to us all. Embarrassment feels like death because it's the eradication of your ego. All of your fears and insecurities are not just bared to the world, but it's done in a sudden and violent manner. It feels so bad that a reaction to embarrassment used to be, I wish I was dead. But one of the Dokoro's principles is to not fear death. Now, because of his constant sword dueling, Musashi meant this literally. 
but the idea holds power for controlling our negative emotions in the modern context. Just remember that no matter how bad things get, eventually they'll end, or you will. No one makes it out of this thing called life alive. We all die. And when you die, unless you do something incredibly uplifting or destructive for society, no one will remember you. And it will only take about 150 years before there is no one alive who ever personally interact with you. So all of those people whose opinions you're worried about, they're going to die as well. And before they die, they're going to be too busy living to ever remember something stupid you did. This might not seem like it's related to dealing with negative emotions, but understanding the ephemeral nature of life is key to realizing something a bit cliche, but life changing. Life is too short to experience negative emotions. Although Musashi tells us specifically in the Dokoro to not get jealous or be detached, he doesn't really have to once you understand this. Once you grasp that this thing called life is going to end for us all, you can really start living. And that means not wasting time wallowing in negative emotions. Now accepting death and the implications of wasting life in negative emotions will solve a lot of your problems. But there is another idea in the Dokoro that actively works to control your negative emotions. But before we get into that, I have to tell you about the Stoic Street Smarts Blueprint. Before I reveal this final principle that will completely transform how you handle negative emotions, I want to tell you about something I've created. You see, these ideas from Musashi's Dokoro are just the tip of the iceberg. In my Stoic Street Smarts Blueprint, I break down 24 powerful lessons that combine ancient Stoic wisdom with real street tested experience. I'm talking about the exact mindset tools that helped me stay focused while bullets were flying in the projects, keep my head cool during a heavyweight fight, and maintain composure throughout my physics degree. I built an unshakable mental fortress that no one could penetrate. This isn't some theoretical philosophy course. These are battle-tested principles that work whether you're dealing with office politics or actual gang politics. Every Monday and Thursday for 12 weeks, you'll receive a Stoic Street Smarts lesson that cuts through the BS with a powerful quote to help reshape your perspective and a practical assignment to help build mental toughness. If you're ready to develop the type of emotional control that made warriors like Musashi legendary, click on the link in my pinned tweet to join the Stoic Street Smarts Blueprint. Now, let me show you this final principle that ties everything together about emotional control with the Dokodo. Honor is a funny thing. Sticking to a code of honor might feel restrictive, but it's in this restriction where the most emotional freedom is found. I always tell people that a strong value system is the easiest way to make most decisions. When you live true, you know what you'll do before the situation even arises. It's the answer key to a test before the test is even written. When you already know what lines you won't cross and what influences you won't allow in your life, you become free. Not caring what other people think is a superpower but it's one that's readily available to anyone who is willing to embrace a set of values that leads to a purposeful life. This is the secret to not fearing death. It's remarkably liberating and ironically, it's the natural endpoint of developing emotional control. Once you accept that people have their own problems to deal with and that anytime something negative happens to you, it's impersonal or collateral damage of people pursuing their own interests, you realize that no one is thinking about you. In the Dokodo, Musashi's 20th principle is, you may abandon your body, but you must preserve your honor. Musashi is not so many words telling you that if you live so true to your values that you rather die than compromise, you have achieved a level of emotional control and emotional freedom that guards your mind from any negative thoughts. Imagine what it would be like to be so committed to your morals and code of honor that the opinions of the outside world are nothing to you. You never f never feel embarrassment because there is no part of you to expose. You never get sad because you accept the world as it is. You never get angry because you don't expect anything, so you'd be ready for everything. Now, all of these tips from Musashi's Dokoro are excellent for helping you to master your emotions and not care what anyone thinks. But you wanna know what really helps? Being good at a lot of different skills because competence breeds confidence. Fortunately, Musashi also outlined a blueprint for learning any skill. I break down the lessons for achieving mastery that Miyamoto Musashi teaches us in the Book of Five Rings. Check it out.